Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. He is Jake Croucher. I'm Matthew Berry. And before we get into today's Fantasy Football Happy Hour, we just want to take a moment here to extend our thoughts and our prayers, which seem inadequate. But, you know, it's what we have for everyone in Puerto Rico and Florida that have been affected by Hurricane Ian. Like, the numbers and the visuals that have been coming in are staggering. It's a, it was a Category 4 hurricane declared yesterday. Winds up to 150 miles an hour. Over 2.5 million people are without power. I'm sure even more people are stranded in their homes or worse, having to flee their homes because their homes are literally being blown and, and washed away. Uh, you know, uh, there are the images of flooded streets and destroyed homes. Uh, reporters having to hold on to poles to not be blown away. Um, you know, uh, people are, are, are scared for their lives. It, it is truly a, um, a death-defying, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just an, just an awful awful situation and just on a personal level i you know uh the west coast the, the southwest part of florida is very meaningful to me and my family i have a lot of family there i have a lot of close friends there it is where uh, my wife and i when we were dating it was the first vacation we took it is where my wife and i got engaged um it is uh it's home to us it's um we vacation there all the time it's a beautiful area and like i said i i have family that live there i have friends that live there and they are safe to the extent that I know. I mean, honestly, because cell service is down, like you can't get a hold of anyone there. It's, yep. it, it, so it's just, it, it's, it's awful and there are no words other than to say that we feel awful for them and we wanted to acknowledge that before we got into today's business. Yep, yep. Um, and so anyway, there's no easy transition uh, from talking about that to talking about fantasy football, but that is the job. It is worth noting that um, there were some questions about whether the Sunday night game between the Chiefs and Buccaneers, which was to take place in Tampa Bay, would in fact be played in Tampa Bay. But um, yes, we can confirm that that will that it is going to stay in Tampa Bay. I know they explored other sites, including Minnesota, um, but uh, as of now, uh, it believes that the, the game will be played Sunday night in Tampa Bay, and we're all looking forward to the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. So um, we're going to take one quick moment here, and then we'll come back, and we'll do the love-hate show for week number four with Jay and I, but just wanted to send our thoughts and prayers and hopes to, um, to everyone uh, that's affected by Hurricane Ian. Absolutely. Okay, let's get to some less important Stuff. Very, yeah, it seems dumb. Honestly, it feels dumb and insignificant to talk about fantasy football, talk about fake football with what's going on in the world and the images we saw yesterday and we're seeing today as well. Um, it'll continue to be updated on NBC News and, you know, um, wherever you get uh, your news. But we are, we're a fake football show. We're a fake football show. So let's Hopefully talk about fake football. Hopefully provides a little brief, silly escape. Yes. Um, so, the Roto World headlines. Jameis Winston who has a transverse fracture in his back. He did not practice on Thursday after not practicing on Wednesday. And then Michael Thomas, another malady, his toe. He did not practice Thursday either. My question to you is, is Andy Dalton a streaming option? If he's playing, what are you doing with Andy Dalton? You like the matchup with Minnesota. They're 29th against the pass over the last four, uh, over, you know, since the start of the season. But he's Andy Dalton. <laughs> He is so it, is he is he a streaming option in a one quarterback league? I don't think he is. But do I think if you were if you're sitting there sifting through the Joe Flacco's and and you know uh, of the world of the of the Mar Marcus Mariotas of the of the world, if you're down that deep, then yeah, I think he potentially could be. I would feel better about him if we knew Michael Thomas was playing, and we're not going to know. Here's the positives if there is any. This is the London game. It's Saturday morning at not Sunday morning. Uh, sorry, it's Sunday morning at 9:30. So we will know. We'll know who Andy Dalton has available to him if Michael Thomas is going to play. Jarvis Landry did return to practice today, so that's good news for the Saints and that offense. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like he, I'd rank him somewhere in the kind of the the you know low teens. So I think he's a lower end QB two. But yes, if he has Michael Thomas back, given the matchup and that he's practiced all week with the with the ones. I think he's a viable, like you can live with it, flex option. But he's not certainly I'm um, someone to run to the off uh, to the waiver wire to grab. He's a he's a if you're desperate op option. I will say though, if Michael Thomas misses, that would alleviate some of the concerns I have about Chris Olave because, let's face it, Andy Dalton ain't Jameis Winston, no. and that is damning with faint praise. Doesn't but like, but right, he doesn't throw it deep. He's not 
Winston is the perfect quarterback for Olave. Yep. A and so I think if Dalton were under center, you're probably still starting Olave, but you wouldn't be as excited about this matchup as you might be if Winston were under center and no Michael Thomas. You'd be like, hey, we're all in on Olave. By the way, Olave made the love list this week. Yep. And Olave, he has, of all the high volume wide receivers in the NFL, he has the highest average depth of target yeah. of everyone. We think that's pretty inextricably linked to Jameis Winston. So it'll be interesting to see if. He has another dimension if it is Andy Dalton at quarterback, but hopefully Jameis can play now. Another but something to watch out for if you if Jameis yeah. is your quarterback, um, who is a viable streamer this week against uh, the Saints. If he if he's active tomorrow he's will be an important yep. day as well. Yep. Okay. Another quarterback uh, with a back issue, Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, back and ankle issue. He's questionable for week four against the Bengals, but there now is the expectation that he will play. The betting market has been moving towards the Dolphins. It's been gone from uh, Bengals minus four and a half to now Bengals minus three and a half. So expecting that Tua will play. I assume we're just loading up Tua just as normal and starting him against the Bengals defense that is fine, but not super intimidating. The Joe Flacco torched. Yes. Right. I mean, again, I think any quarterback, any competent quarterback, and Tua is a competent quarterback, any yep. competent quarterback that has Tyreek Hill and Jalen Wadd to throw through, throw to, you like. You don't love the fact that he's missed some practice. You don't love the fact that they're traveling on a short week after playing, you know, that insane game last week. But, yes, I, I would not, if Tua was my only quarterback and he's active, you're starting Tua Tungavailoa against the Cincinnati Bengals as well. Um, it's It's been a... Even though Cincinnati has, you know, they gave up all those yards to to Flacco, the fact is is that opposing quarterbacks are averaging under 10 fantasy points a game to opposing quarterbacks. Um, uh, you know, they, they did – sorry, I'm, I'm confusing Cincinnati and Cleveland. Joe Flacco actually struggled against them last week. I, uh, you know, in, in week three, I'm confusing the – Got some the, garbage the Brown, time the, 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 activity. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting my, uh, my uh, guys <laughs> mixed yeah. up here. I was – candidly, I'll be honest with you. I was up all night watching hurricane footage. I'm dead serious about that. You know, I'm – again, I have a ton of family there, and so it was just super worrisome. And so, anyway, back to this. Back to Tua. What I would say is, is that I think you're starting to, a, but I would lower expectations. He's not somebody that I would play in DFS unless you're on a one-game slate kind of thing. Um, so lower expectations, but still have him as a borderline QB1 in this matchup against the Bengals. Yep, I'm with you, you on know, what's that. What's interesting is a buddy of mine has this rule. I'm curious as you as our betting uh, uh, expert here, what you think of that. But my buddy is, is like anytime after week three, we are in week four. Anytime after week three, when you see a team with a losing record giving points to a team with a winning record, yeah. you take you take the winning you take that even if it's ugly. And so there's three games this week where that qualifies, right? And so um, the Bengals, despite having a losing record, are actually the favorites against the three and zero Dolphins. The Rams, which have a winning record, are underdogs to the one and two 49ers. And um, and the Raiders, the winless Raiders, are favorites against the two and one Broncos. Yeah, there's. And, there's and so <laughs> I, I kind of like the Rams, the Broncos, and the and the and the Dolphins. Okay. With the points in any, are you with me on this theory? I'm 100% with you on the Rams. I think that's the most wrong line of the week. I would have the Rams minus one in that game. Uh, I do think. Dolphins, Bengals, I think these two teams are very evenly matched. It's just all the ancillary factors go in the Bengals' favor. Short week home team. More home field advantage on a short week as travel and rest yeah, yeah. and all that. Rookie head coach on his first short week as well in Mike McDaniel. Everyone on the Dolphins is banged up. Tua, Jalen Waddell, he's got a groin. Teron Armstead. Uh, so I do think that the, Beng the Bengals will be my side, but I don't, I don't hate the Dolphins plus three and a half for the reasons that you which said. Is, which I just said, to be clear, all of us have a groin. <laughs> yes. I, mean, I know you said Jalen Waddle has a groin. I don't want you anyone to it's think that. It's probably less of a groin right now. Fair. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I just I want to be – research has confirmed um, that, in fact, that, you know, um, uh, Jalen Waddle is not unique in having a groin. Very good. Um, now, uh, he, a guy but who, he does have an injury to his groin. All a right, guy who say? has lots of body parts that yes, often get hurt um, is Christian McCaffrey. Yes, and we sir. talked a lot about M. Night Shyamalan yesterday for kind of seven minutes of the 60-minute show. Uh, and Christian McCaffrey is Mr. Glass from Unbreakable, uh, where he's constantly going down. Are you worried about Christian McCaffrey? Because uh, I will say that, yes, people pop up on the injury report. This one seemed a little bit more worrisome than usual. It's worrisome just because it's him, yeah. right? I mean, and he made the joke. He's just like, he goes to the bathroom and it shows up on the in yeah. injury report. But yeah, that's what happens when you are the best 
uh, player in fantasy football and you've missed as many games in the last two years as Christian McCaffrey has. Because prior to that two-year stretch, CMC was a guy that literally was never on the injury report. Like, never missed a practice, never missed a game. You know, college and, and in the NFL and in the last two years have been brutal. He, so, it's a thigh injury this week. Last week, he got placed in the, in, the injury uh, report with an ankle, but ended up playing uh, against the Saints. And so, um, eyebrows raised. I'm aware. Um, uh, but if I, and if I had to pick a Panthers running back, if CMC were to miss, give me Deontay Foreman who I think is just the better running back than Chuba Hubbard. Now, Chuba Hubbard, obviously, you know, filled in for last year McCaffrey, but I just think Foreman's the better running back. Hubbard's probably the closer fit to what McCaffrey's style is, but I just think Foreman's the better running back and the better chance at a touchdown if McCaffrey were to miss. But let's see how today goes. I'm not panicking just yet. Again, I think it's important to him to shed that injury-prone label, and so I think that if it's – if it's 50-50, my guess is he goes. Yeah, the two guys, the two big superstar running backs who had the injury-prone tag coming into the season were Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley. To me, McCaffrey's always been a lot more concerning because Saquon's injury is like, he tore his ACL. Mm. That's not a recurring thing, whereas McCaffrey had his shoulder sprain and the ankle and now the soft tissue of the thigh. So it is a little bit of a concern. Uh, now, the Seahawks, they place Travis Homer uh, on injured reserve, which in a nutshell, doesn't seem super uh, relevant or exciting, but he played 22 snaps against the Niners in week two, and this should be good news for Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, it feels like they haven't wanted to commit to either guy on third down. I'm hoping that it becomes Kenneth Walker. I know they're excited about Kenneth Walker at in Seattle among the coaching staff, and Penny can catch passes as well. But, yes, I suppose if, if there is a beneficiary, if you will, to uh, Travis Homer going on IR, it's DJ Dallas who, you know, played all the snaps in the two-minute drill and most of the third downs when Homer went out. Saw 15 total snaps. Uh, Rashad Penny got 49, though. You know, again, I, if you are starting a, a running back this week at Detroit, and I could see that being viable, by the yep. way, I think it's Rashad Penny. So it's worth noting that, you know, maybe he gets a little bit more work and maybe this – this op opens the opportunity with a full week of practice to get Kenneth Walker, who is a rookie, some more reps um, in doing some of the third down stuff. So, anyway, I don't know. I don't think there's a big fantasy impact to this. Pro but it was very important to Stephen D'Agostino. <laughs> you really, that wanted, we, to that we, you really wanted to get Travis Homer You really wanted to get Travis Homer in there. I don't – I don't know. Most of the show – I'll just be clear to America. Most of the show is for you guys. A little bit of it is for me and Jay – and then, like, about two or three minutes is for our producers to just do whatever it is they want. Just And so this one was for Stevens. This was for, Travis this was for Stevens. This was the Travis Steven, <laughs> I don't know, who's, who's, like, the world's craziest Travis Homer fan. Travis Homer. Okay, now probably a uh, yeah. more relevant development. Uh, low bar to clear, but Michael Gallup, who tore yeah. his ACL in January, starting to look like he is going to play against your commanders. Now, what are, we doing with Michael, what are we doing with Michael Gallup? And maybe more importantly, what are we doing with Noah Brown? I think what we're doing is we're, we're continuing to roster both. I, I think that Noah Brown is still potentially interesting this week in leagues and where you've been playing him because, again, we don't know how many snaps Michael Gallup's going to play. There's clearly a connection between Cooper Rush and uh, Noah Brown. And let's be clear, my commanders can't stop anything. No. Right? You know, they can't stop the music. <laughs> they, they, they can't stop dancing. You know, they can't stop anything. Uh, and, and so – Michael Gallup, you know, in a, in a game in which he probably, they try to ease him back in. Noah Brown, who has 213 yards and a touchdown this season, 15 of 21 targets through three 21 games. 21 targets. I mean, like, it's seven through. targets a game. Yeah. Did that math in my head, by the way. <laughs> yeah. 21 games, three games, 21 targets, three games, just boom. Like, you're like, oh, Barry, are you a genius? Maybe. Not for me to say. Not for me to say. Some people are saying it, not me, but some people have said that. It has been said. It has been said. Yes. Um, in the by, hallways of Stanford. <laughs> in the now, hallways of Stanford. Michael Gallup. Uh, he's a genius. How did Barry get paid by this company to, <laughs> yes. to be the, the, the 21 to buy three, analysis? baby. Yeah. Right. Um, Gallup, it, Gallup had over 100 targets in 2019. Yeah. 2020 he was on pace for a similar amount um, last season, but he missed all the time. Like This is a, a real wide receiver, but I do think that with Noah Brown, the way that he has played is going to mean that Gallup gets more eased in gradually just because they've got the guy who has performed. 
So I would still be playing Noah Brown. I, I would too. I have Noah Brown ranked higher than Michael Gallup this week. So again, right, if you're picking somebody. But I do think Michael Gallup, who's not rostered in 100% of Yahoo leagues, yeah, he's gonna be. Needs, to, needs to be. Yep. He needs to Particularly be. Particularly with Dak Prescott coming back potentially yes. in the next two weeks. Correct. Now, Wondell Robinson, who's kind of been in your stable. You're yeah. a Wondell guy. I'm a Wondell uh, guy. He didn't practice on Wednesday. Uh, are we a little bit concerned about Wondell? And also, what are we doing about the Giants pass catcher situation? Can I interest you in any Richie James? Uh, you cannot interest me in any Richie James. Two first names, though, always a crowd <laughs> pleaser. I like, suppose, listen, against the Bears, like, maybe, you know, I just... I, I think Wando Robinson is the one guy for me. I know we've seen it from Kadarius Turney, but it just seems like he can't stay on the field, doesn't seem like he has the confidence of the current coaching staff. Wando Robinson is the one guy that I would probably grab and stash as a flyer. I'm not starting him this week, even if he plays, doesn't look like he's on, on, uh, on pace to do so. He's starting to do a little bit of work. I would want to see it first, but I do think there's upside because there's going to be targets available in a competent offense. The Giants offense isn't great, but it's competent. It's competent enough that Saquon Barkley is the number one running back in fantasy, right? And they're going to have to throw it somewhat. So Wanda Robinson, who's kind of a gadget player who they can find different ways, whether it's, you know, backfield sweeps, whether it's quick slants, they, they'll manufacture ways to get Robinson the ball once he's out there. And he has the confidence of his coaching staff because this is, this was their pick this year the coaching staff and the new regime there. So, yeah, I like Wondell Robinson as somebody to, to grab and stash, but not necessarily play in week four. Richie James is the number one wide receiver on the Giants right now by default in uh, 2022. Richie James, number one wide receiver. All right, let's yeah, get I'm, in. I'm, 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 I'm the number one fantasy analyst on this show. <laughs> like, I mean, like, you know, like. Number one like, mathematician. Like, right. No, I mean, like, it's just, it's like, sure. I mean, like, you know, I mean, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess he is, right? You know, like, you're yes. the number one Australian on this show. It's like, true. Like, what? I mean, like, okay, sure, but... <laughs> you're the number two Australian. All right, That's running true. back. I, I am a co-author of Crocodile Dundee <laughs> yes, in Los Angeles. It's true. That gives so, you more Australian equity than me, I I'm 100%. All right, let's get into running back, love, hate. Yeah. All right. Look at that fancy graphic. Love. Another guy who you keep going back to the well on, Alvin Kamara, makes your list again. Let's just have a running spot on Alvin Kamara and the know. love list. I'm going to be Why right eventually. This week? Like, if you keep putting him on there, eventually I'll be right. I, I, I get it. I, I understand it. If you're like, you're, I'm like, I'm done. I, I hear you. It's been frustrating. But if ever there was a week, Alvin Kamara, I believe this is, this is it, right? So all three games that the Vikings have played this year, they've allowed 85 or more scrimmage yards to the opposing running backs. Jameis Winston either isn't going to play or is less than 100%. Michael Thomas also has missed practice. We talked about it at the top of the show. So it feels like this is a great game to focus the offense on Alvin Kamara, right? I mean, Vikings bottom 10 in the NFL in both rushing yards and receptions allowed to opposing running backs. Kamara has seen 73% of the running back carries and an almost 16% target share. So it's not like he hasn't been getting the ball when he's been out there. He's played two games this year. It's the fact that you know, just hasn't been productive so far. But in this matchup, I feel like it will be. I'm back in on Alvin Kamara. I am as a top 10 play. He makes the love list this week. Let's go, AK-47. I'm in. There's a, uh, there's a betting term or a strategy called the Martingale strategy where okay. whenever you lose, you just double down. Yeah, sure. You just double your stake. It's not a very responsible strategy and not something that should be done. But you're Martingaling with Alvin Kamara. I like it. I do think that, I do think if you have Alvin Kamara, you kind of want Andy Dalton. To start honestly because Jameis has been highest average depth of yep. target in the league like we were talking about yesterday no more Trent Dill for Jameis he's back to full Jameis baby full Jameis, full Jameis baby is not it's not congruous with Alvin Kamara. Dump. You don't want to dump oh. off. Don't dump off to a running give me, back. Give me uh, a dump off deep. Dalton. Yeah, dump off Dalton. Dalton. There you and go. The, you know, he's no longer the red rifle. He's kind of the red <laughs> pop gun. Yeah. He's kind of like the red pea shooter. Dump off Dalton. So, yeah, dump play. off Dalton. Yeah, we'll, Let's go, baby. Yeah. All right, Khalil Herbert. <laughs> yes, sir. He makes the love list as well. Uh, obviously, an incredible performance. Filling in for David Montgomery. I'm pretty sure he's the best running back in Chicago. I'm not sure it's even really close, but mm. he makes the, the love list this week. Khalil Herbert. Two first names, always a crowd pleaser. Two last names as well. Because Khalil and, Khalil and Herbert are both last names, but Herbert's also a first. Like, yeah. Anyway, a lot Same going on there. Same could be made for Richie James, but the, that's okay. The fact, Rich, exactly. The, the fact is, is that when Khalil Herbert has gotten time, he's been productive. He started two games last year, 18.8 fantasy points per game, averaging 22 touches in those two games. Uh, last week, obviously, the 22 touches, 169 total yards, two touchdowns, more yards and fantasy points than Dave Montgomery has ever had in a single game this season. Now, Montgomery has yet to be 
fully ruled out for Sunday, but the expectation is, is that he will not play and Khalil Herbert will get the start against a Giants team that has allowed the third most rushing yards to running backs this season. I'm in on Khalil Herbert. He makes the love list. I'm as a top 10 play this week. He's just really good. Yards after contact per attempt, he leads the league. And I think the, the much maligned Chicago Bears yeah. offensive line, it's actually a really good run blocking unit. They can't pass block to save their life, but for whatever reason, really good at run blocking. Uh, but if you don't pass, you don't have to block <laughs> exactly. for the pass. Yeah. Genius. Everyone's making yeah. fun of Eberflus, but you know. <laughs> yeah, he's, right? He's, uh, he's playing chess. Don't have to pass block. He's yeah, playing chess. chess. We're all playing, playing checkers. checkers. Exactly yeah. right. They're two and one. They are I mean, two and one. Say what you want. The Bears are two and one. So, That's, the, so are the New York Giants. So are the Henry New York White football Man, Giants. One of these teams is going to be three and one after this by week. The, by the way, and I, so the Panthers, right? The Panthers are two and one, right? No, or are they one and two? two. They're they, one and two. They could easily be two and one, though. They should, they should be two they and one. They could be three and zero. Oh, so they're just playing bad teams. Now, yeah, I, a team that, that really should be two and one is uh, the Detroit Lions, but they blew the end of the, the Minnesota game. Uh, a tough, tough loss for the Dan Campbell yeah. coach of the year backers yeah. like myself, but. Jamal Williams, uh, a bright patch and uh, someone who is going to get a lot of work if DeAndre Swift can't go. He's on the love list. Do we have footage of me doing the Jamal Williams hip thrusting dance from yesterday? <laughs> we don't? Good. Fantastic. <laughs> Please burn it. Um, what I will tell you about Jamal Williams is that he's, when, he, when he's gotten work, he's been really, really good. Through three weeks so far this year, he's averaging 15.9 fantasy points per game, 22 touches, 170 yards. Now, he had the two touch that was in, and two touchdowns in week three. A lot of his fantasy value has been because he's been bolstering DeAndre Swift, but when he has gotten time, he's been productive. And what's more, most importantly is we expect this off. This offense has been a lot better than I think a lot of people gave them credit for, the Detroit Lions, which means they're in scoring position often. And I think you will win a bar bet here if you are asked, who is tied for the lead in the NFL among most goal-to-go carries? And the answer is Jamal Williams. Yeah. He has seven. He's tied for the most in the NFL. Good matchup here with Seattle. Seahawks have allowed the second most rushing yards to opposing running backs. They've allowed 100 or more scrimmage yards to a running back in all three games this year. You can run on Seattle. And so, assuming DeAndre Swift does not play in this game, Jamal Williams is a top-10 fantasy running back this week. You'll see some Craig Reynolds mixed in. But – yeah, I'm all in on Jamal Williams this week. Yeah, I mean, how many true three-down workhorse backs are there in the NFL? And Jamal Williams, he will be that guy if DeAndre Swift is out. I mean, I think it's Saquon, Christian McCaffrey, if he plays, JT, Eckler, Chubb. And then Jamal yeah. Williams has as good an argument for sixth uh, right. as anyone. I have okay. him right now. I am just outside my top ten to be clear, Jamal Williams. But yep. that's because there's still a chance. There's still, you know, talk that Swift may play. Yep. So, yep. but uh, assuming Swift immediately gets ruled out, Jamal Williams will move up a few spots. Okay. Anyway, got he's some, a borderline uh, RB1 this week. Others receiving votes. Just some guys that I think are interesting. Devin Singletary. Look. Last week saw some signs of life, right? Played on 75% of the snaps in week three. Set career highs in targets and receptions. Ravens allow uh, the third most receptions to the position. So, again, if he's getting that passing down involvement, it bodes well for him against Baltimore. Brees Hall. Yeah. Somebody we didn't love. First his, appearance. It, his first appearance. Didn't love his ADP in the preseason no. at all. But now that he's on rosters, the fact of the matter is, is that he's got a Almost a 14% target share so far this season. He's averaging over five yards a carry. Steelers, bottom 10 in the NFL in yards per reception allowed to running backs. What's nice about Brees Hall is he's been involved in the passing game so far. As I mentioned, a 14% target share for the Jets. Over 60 scrimmage yards in all three games this year. It's Ramondre Steven Zine, like season, <laughs> That's poorly done. That's poorly done. I don't like that. Pretty much everything I do is poorly done. Welcome to the show. Thanks for paying attention. 16 touches, 100 yards, and a touchdown last week on four targets for Ramondre Stevenson. Played 62% of the snaps. Packers allowing 5.4 yards per carry to opposing running backs with Brian Hoyer under center. We expect a heavy rushing attack. And again, Stevenson over Harris for me. He's playing more snaps. I think he's the better running back. And he's the more versatile one as well. And we already talked about uh, this Detroit Lions, uh, Seattle Seahawks matchup here, especially from Seattle's point of view. No Travis Homer in this one. Maybe a little bit more work for Rashad Penny, who's already played on nearly 70% of snaps in two of the three games so far this year. Detroit has allowed an NFL high six rushing touchdowns mm. to opposing running backs this year. Good chance. I, I don't know what the odds are off the top of my head. I bet you do at BetMGM. But Rashad Penny, anytime touchdown in that game? Give me that bet. We can get that, particularly if it's over even money, which I suspect it will be. That's I like that. Okay, yeah. let's go negativo. Hate list. Yeah. Miles Sanders, who again is a, a staple uh, yeah. on this He's list. He's the poster yeah. boy for it. I'm, uh, 
I'm curious about this one because he's had 45 attempts, rushing attempts through three mm-hmm. games. Yeah. Uh, 75% of their attempts last week. Uh, I, I guess it's because the Jags have a really good rushing defense. It is as well. So, so you mentioned, you know, like, oh, he's been really good, right? Yeah. Where do you think he ranked last week? I'm guessing not that high to follow on with your little bit here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for playing along. Yeah. He was running back 51 last week. Okay. Okay. On the season, he's running back 23. Yeah. Like the e- everything that the Eagles have done this year has gone awesome. Yes. They've been crushing people left and right. He's been getting a lot of work, right? You almost, Aston, you almost crushed that cup. Yeah, I almost <laughs> did, but I didn't. He, he has gotten the majority of work on an offense that is rolling people. Yep. And he's running back 23. Like, it's as good as it's getting. For, and so you mentioned the fact that, like, um, Jacksonville – has tied for the fewest rushing yards allowed to opposing running backs this season. They've given up no touchdowns. They've given up 3.6 yards per carry. They gave up Jonathan Taylor and Austin Eckler. You've heard of both those guys, right? Good, sure. Good, good football players. Thank you very much. Those two guys combined against the Jaguars uh, average, uh, combined for 59 rushing yards. Yep. Jonathan Taylor and Austin Eckler couldn't get over 60 yards combined between the two of them. And now Miles Sanders is going to do it? And you say, like, ah. Well, what, he'll be a part of the passing game because Jacksonville does struggle there. Fair enough. Jags have allowed the most receiving yards to opposing running backs this year. I hear you. Fine. Gotcha. Oh, wait. You look a little bit deeper at this. He's averaging 2.2 yards per target so far. He's got four targets for the year. He's got 13 total receiving yards, Miles Sanders. Like 13 receiving total receiving yards in three games. The problem is, is that it's not a part of their offense. They, I feel like they preferred Kenneth Gainwell in the passing down back roll on that Eagles offense and that when there is pressure and a lot of quarterbacks would dump off to the running back Jalen Hurts has the ability to be like "Mm, no and I'm gonna just start running right so uh yeah Miles Sanders back on the hate list deservedly so let's be clear about that Cam Akers on the hate list Sean McVay expressing confidence in him he had that bad fumble he's like I still would have gone back to him just because Sean McVay went back to Cam Akers doesn't mean you have to I'm just sitting here and telling you this right now, right? Since he returned from his injury, including the playoffs last year, he's averaging 6.4 fantasy points per game. He's had under 11 fantasy points in all eight games since returning from that injury. He's playing the Niners, which is a top five run defense so far this year, allowing under three yards per carry to opposing running backs. He's going to split time with Daryl Henderson, even if the timeshare has shifted in his direction. Henderson's not going away. So you're in a timeshare with... Uh, with a good running back against a very good defense. I'm out on Kame Na- Akers. He's outside my top 30 for the week. Last week was the first time in eight tries that he'd averaged over 3.7 yards per carry. Uh, so it hasn't been going great for Cam Akers, but Sean McVay seems to really want to give him the ball and give him every chance to fix things. All right, yeah. J.K. Dobbins makes the hate list I mean, right, well. I mean, last week he got a touchdown and he still was running back 30. Yep. San Francisco defense is about as good as it gets against the rush yeah. as well. Okay, J.K. Dobbins on the hate list just because he's, he's just not going to play that much. And he's playing Buffalo, yeah. right? Bill's tied for the fewest rushing yards allowed to opposing running backs so far this season. He played under uh, 50% of the offensive snaps last week. As you see the, uh, the graphic here for those watching on Peacock. Cam Akers right? type numbers. Yeah, I mean, like, exactly. The, the, against the rush this season, the Rams, Titans, and Dolphins all averaging under three yards per carry. And those are all three teams that can run the ball. Uh, and, and they just, they all struggled against Buffalo. He's not being used in the passing game yet. He was running back 45 last week. I'm at 35 this week. I don't know. I just, I, I want to see it before I'm ready to be all in on J.K. Dobbins. It's about as tough of a spot as you can have for a guy coming off a serious injury in his second game back. Now you're going to play the Buffalo Bills. The Ravens are still three-point underdogs in that game, so expecting they won't be running it too much. Okay, we're going to go to break. When we come back, some pass catches. Wide receiver, love hate. The NFL season is here, Matthew Barry, and the NBC Sports Predictor app is giving you a shot at winning $100,000 by entering Sunday Night 7's free contest Wait. between the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. So if whoa, you don't have whoa, the whoa. NBC Sports Predictor app, go download it now. Well, I got a chance to win $100,000 for free? For free. And all I got to do is download the Sunday Night 7, the NBC Sports Predictor app, and play the SNF Sunday Night 7 game? That's 100% correct. Mr. And I get $100,000 for $100, free? $100,000 for free. No wow. risk. Wow. Yeah. In uh, 
in the gambling space, we call that a good play. That's a good play. It's a good play. What am I doing here? Am I eligible to win? You can or win. You can play. Are you sure? Yeah, you can do it. I don't think I am, actually. <laughs> okay, I, I would read the – because I'm an NBC employee. Okay. I'm an NBC Universal full-time employee. I'm almost positive I can't win. Okay, that's sad. Not Which sad. Is, this is why I'm sad. Why, maybe I, should I quit my job and do nothing but play Sunday Night 7 and win that hundred grand? That would be going all in. Be going all in. All right. I like it. We'll see you later, Matthew Barry. All right, all right. wide receiver. Yes, Love. sir. Hate. Mm. Now, the first mm. guy on your love list is CD Lamb, which I understand completely. My question to you, you're a Commanders fan, apparently. Yeah, uh, hail the Commanders, hail victory. Washington Commanders in 2020, the year that Alex Smith took them to the playoffs, they had the yeah. second best pass defense in the NFL. Mm. They don't have the second best pass defense in the NFL anymore. It was 28th last year by DVO. It's 28th right now. Yeah. What the hell Jack happened? Jack Del Rio should not be... What's happened? Right. Yeah, Jack Del Rio has not done a good job with this defense. I mean, I mean, be honest. I mean, numbers are numbers. You know what I mean? Like, all due respect to the guy, um, but like, it's they've been bad, and they've been bad for a while. And Ron Rivera is a loyal guy, and but I think he's been too loyal to Jack Del Rio. Is the unfortunate truth of the matter is? Listen, your secondary helps when you get a pass rush and losing Chase Young. Yep. That does not help, right? I mean, uh, having a big pass rush certainly helps your secondary, but um, but they have some real guys on that line still, and the, it yep. just. All of it. Just the scheme is wrong, and they're just they're getting out coached week in and week out. Um, if ever there was a week to not get out coached, it's this week with Mike McCarthy. <laughs> your your boy. The, my, yeah. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that whether it's Dak Prescott or Cooper Rush under center, the floor has remained insanely high with CeeDee Lamb, who's had double-digit targets in all three games so far this year, almost a 40% target share in the two games that Cooper Rush has started, including averaging 18.9 fantasy points per game. To your point about my Washington Commanders, they are bottom five of the NFL in catches allowed, yards allowed, touchdowns allowed to opposing wide receivers. Pick a stat, Jay, and they're near the bottom of the NFL in almost all of them. So now do you ask me why should Jack Del Rio still have a job? I don't know. Speaking of M. Night Shyamalan, when you talk about the Washington defense, yeah. it's like when Bruce Willis finds out he's dead at the end of The Sixth Sense. Whoa, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler alert! No, it came what out in 1999. Doing? What? Spoiler alert! People the, haven't seen it. That people we haven't seen The Sixth Sense. Well, that's on them. Came I'm just. I'm there. sorry. Came we're alive. Year. Bleep that, Stephen. Bleep that for the rears and the. Um, came out the same year as Fight Club, and Brad Pitt's not real in that movie. Oh either. God! Yeah. You're killing us that's here. Right. That's it. What an asshole! What are you it's doing? 1999. I don't care. 2022. That's a spoiler. Now. Come on. All right, Michael Pittman. Transition. God. Michael Pittman. He's at nine. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna come over. I'm gonna come over on the holidays and talk to your kids about a bunch of stuff. Was Kevin Spacey Kaiser Sose? From the usual suspects? Was I'm not saying! Sose? I'm not saying who is anything! Stop, you animal! Good uh, God! Speak. So mean! Nothing's worse than people who spoil stuff. People, I'm not gonna spoil anything uh, from the 21st century. I don't do whatever! In a world of streaming, we've got young kids. They haven't watched it. It's the <laughs> my young kids are watching you know, Fight Club. We're in you know trouble. what? Well, guess what? So let me. You know what? You know what you just did. M Night Shyamalan has <laughs> one freaking good movie. He's got one. He a 25 year career with one good movie, yeah, and you just ruin ruined it. it. I want to ruin it. You just deserve. ruined it because once you know how that movie ends, the movie sucks. Exactly. The, it's a one right? trick pony. Uh, but you just ruined it for people who hadn't seen it yet. Like There's a whole Blunt. new audience of people that. Uh, oh God. Six cents. I think Unbreakable is better than you give it credit for, and uh, I think the masses would be with me on that. I think he's got one and a half. Put up a movies. poll. Let's yeah. do a poll. I, I, <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm done. Speaking of one good thing on one thing, Michael Pittman is the one good wide receiver on the Indianapolis Colts. He's had nine and thirteen targets in two games. Um, that's a Cooper Cup type workload. He's on the love list. He, uh, he, he, <laughs> still rattled about <coughs> success. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm buggered by it. I'm upset. Buggered. You know, I am. I am, you know, like. The Los Angeles script. All right, Michael Pittman. To Michael your point, Pittman. you know, find somebody who looks at you the way Matt Ryan looks at Michael Pittman. 25% target share in both games that Pittman has played. Eight or more receptions in both games. Nice matchup here with the Titans, right? As Tennessee is allowed. The most touchdowns to opposing wide receivers this season. The fourth most yards to opposing wide receivers as well. Give me Michael Pittman as a top uh, top 13 play this week. Yeah, 
I don't think people properly value and appreciate Michael Pittman I the agree. way that you appreciate um, spoiler alerts, but because it's Jonathan Taylor. Am I wrong offense. on this, guys? Just like in the get in my no. ear, like uh, camera guys are back, like uh, everyone in the crew. The crew is like, give me a thumbs up. Cam's like, walking you, around they're, in they're, circles. They're, they, they, like <laughs> stage manager, research, like everyone here in the studio is just like, what an animal you are, Jay. As a twenty. Is it, is, is, is it? Let me ask you this: Is it an Australian thing to be an asshole, or is it just a Jay thing? <laughs> it's just the Jay thing. It's just a Jay but thing. The statute of limitations on spoilers expires after I two decades. I disagree. We are living a world of stream. You have kids that are growing that have never seen these movies. Like my kids have not seen that. Like, like, ah, like, <laughs> you know what? Don't. Can we don't. talk about like Luke Skywalker's? No, father? don't say anything. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, okay. No, I'm not going to tell you who Luke's themselves. father is. Yeah. Just there's three movies there, and at some point, Luke's father gets revealed. That's all you need to know. It's an incredible moment as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna spoil that one. Yeah. One of the yeah one of the great <laughs> film moments. And um, like, and I'm not even gonna tell you what I'm binging because I'm binge. I I binge stuff I'll, out of I'll order. Find out. Yeah, I'll no, find and then out. you'll I'll ruin it for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The worst. You're the worst. That's awful. All right. That's cool. awful. You probably take candy from kids. You know who else is on the love list? Somebody. You know. You know who's an anti Jay Croucher is mm. Gabriel Davis. Okay. I'm back in on him. <laughs> Again. Here's the thing. Well, I've always. I've never left. I've never left. I. I this is. We've talked about the Ravens secondary, Jay, and how much they've struggled. They've allowed an NFL high 17 deep receptions through three games. 46% of Gabriel Davis's targets this season have come on deep passes, passes 15 or yards more down the field. They're actually allowing a 63% completion rate on deep passes. That's second highest in the NFL. That's a bunch of numbers that tell you what you already know if you watch any football, which is you can throw and throw deep on the Baltimore Ravens. And when Josh Allen throws deep, a lot of times he's looking for Gabriel Davis again. Almost half of his targets this year has come 15 or yards more down the field. I have Gabriel Davis as a top 20 play this week. Yep, I like that. I do think that people are going to look into Josh Allen having 63 pass attempts and Gabe Davis only getting six targets. But at the same time, he played 96% of the snaps. Dolphins were selling out to stop the deep ball. That's why Devin Singletary got so many receptions. All right, some other guys receiving votes. Devontae Smith against the Jacksonville. Jags allowing the seventh highest yards per reception to opposing wide receiver. Team high, almost 29% target share over the last two weeks. For Devontae Smith, it wasn't just the last big game there. Tyler Lockett against Detroit. My expectation here is DK Metcalf is going to be shadowed by Jeff Okuda. So, uh, by the way, Metcalf on the hate list, just a heads up there. But Okuda is one of the reasons why Justin Jefferson had such a – He's legit. He's one of the reasons why Jefferson had such a bad game last week. Lions do rank bottom 10 in receptions and yards allowed to opposing wide receivers. So, with Okuda shutting down Metcalf, my expectation here is Lockett, who has 20 targets and 18 receptions over the last two weeks is the beneficiary i have him as a top 26 play and the human dorch greg dorch are you ready to are you ready to dorch the competition you ready to dorch this house greg dorch back this week he's 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 a top 21 wide receiver so far in the season averaging 15.3 fantasy points per game playing uh 56 percent of the snaps i like him against the carolina panthers okay let's get to some height now so brandon cooks Okay. Uh, I oh, and I'll just quickly, I'll just mention David Njoku and Tyler Conklin, two tight ends. If you're looking at streaming there, um, you know, Conklin, by the way, has 24 targets through three games. I think people would be surprised to know that so far this year, Tyler Conklin is the third best tight end in fantasy. Yeah. And Njoku, I'm not expecting the kind of game he had against Pittsburgh, but the fact of the matter is he's playing a lot of snaps, running a lot of routes. Falcons bottom five in receptions, yards, and catch rate allowed to opposing tight ends. Very interested to see how Conklin goes with Zach Wilson. Just new quarterback, new situation. We'll see if that can carry over. All right, Brandon Cooks on the hate list. Why do you hate Brandon Cooks? Well, first off, there may be a J.C. Jackson shadow, so you don't love that. He's had a 44% catch rate this season. Davis Mills just has not looked good. Um, Davis Mills is what some people call the Jay Croucher of (laughs) NFL quarterbacks, just ruining (laughs) an otherwise good thing. Much like you have ruined movies for our audience and beloved people out there, Davis Mills is ruining Brandon Cooks for fantasy managers. He's got a career low 5.4 yards per 5.5 yards per target. This is a guy who's one of the better deep threats in the NFL, and they're just they're it's all just you know near the line of scrimmage and stuff. No red zone targets this year no end zone targets for Brandon Cooks tough matchup against the Chargers I'm outside my top 25 Allen Robinson also makes the hate list here Jay I'm not gonna let you talk because you might spoil something else (laughs) Um, despite playing 90 93 percent of offensive snaps 
Allen Robinson has a 12% target share. He's been targeting only 11% of his routes. Free Allen Robinson. Free Allen Robinson, Sean McVay. Free Allen Robinson, who, by the way, is very much alive at the end of this movie. But we it's a think. tough, we think, Maybe we not. think he is. But for whatever reason, they're just not looking his way. It's a tough matchup with the Niners as well. Top five in the NFL in fewest receptions and yards allowed to opposing wide receivers. So he's not getting a lot of looks. He's got a tough matchup with the Niners. Allen Robinson, unfortunately, makes the hate list. He's outside my top 40 for the week. No, uh, hasn't had more than five targets in any game. Allen Robinson yet. Yeah, 29 years old. Last season wasn't too good. Not a good start this season either. Some concerns there. All right, we're going to go to break when we come back. Some quarterbacks, including, spoiler alert, a guy who is playing tonight. It's Joe Biden. How hard is it to say spoiler <laughs> alert? See, you just did it there. Like, that's not tough. Like, heads up. I'm about ready to ruin it something for you. Tune away. How did you find out about the white helmet? Were you consulted in the decision? And what do you think about the white helmet? <laughs> I'd play in trash bags. I really don't care what we wear out there. going to make you wear a trash bag <laughs> on, on the show. Tomorrow. I just, I want to do this right now and I want to do this publicly. So our state manager, Cam, yeah. 23 years old, 23 years old, like it's his first job, right? Like it's like first out of college, he comes here this to NBC. Be good. He does a great job. We love him here at NBC Sports. And he just tells us in the commercial break, he says, I have never seen The Sixth Sense. I have never seen Fight Club. And now I never will. <laughs> Those are two great movies. But our guy, Jay Croucher, has ruined that. So, I mean, I just, I hope on behalf of him, and I'm sure there are many other young men and women out there watching the show, like Cam, that are like, oh, you know what, maybe I could, now I'm old enough to watch something like Fight Club, maybe with my father or something like that, maybe a bonding moment that I could have with a family member or something like that. And now that's a joy that I won't experience it because the Grinch, Jay Croucher, has taken it away from me. So on behalf of all of us here at NBC Sports, and by all of us, I mean all of us except Jay Croucher, Cam, I apologize to you and to everyone like you that hasn't seen these movies and now never will experience the joy of those two movies because of this guy. You can watch Fight Club as soon as you turn seven. Cam's had 16 years to watch the film Fight Club. Yeah, but you know what he was doing? He was at school. He was studying. He was getting good so he could he could get to his dream job of working for NBC Sports. Because he can't just roll up off the street and get a job here. Like, guys like me are few and far between. Most people that get here are, like, smart and qualified. And so, like, he was studying hard. And now that he's finally got his dream job, he's like, you know, I'm going to kick back, relax. Let me pop on a little Netflix, maybe a little Peacock, see what I got going. Uh, hey, look at that. There's Fight Club. I hear good things about that. Up, oh, no. Because now I know the whole big reveal. Now Because of this guy. About Tyler Dunn. I got a question for you. Yeah, what? M. Night Shyamalan. Do you reckon he goes around <laughs> introducing himself? Hello, I'm M. Night. <laughs> oh, what insane. does he call himself? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm M. Night. I bet you it's, I, no, I bet you it's like Night. I bet everyone calls him like Night. You know, okay. like M, not not M or M. I don't right. feel like it's both. He's either M or he's Knight. Okay. Somebody who's a friend of M Knight Shyamalan, let me know. Please let please us know. Please let us know. Now, but, okay. but 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 if you are a friend of M Knight Shyamalan and you also watch the show, do me a favor. Let us know, but don't let him know that we've just been, you know, killing it. I'm sure he's a lovely man. I've never met the guy. Like, I have nothing against him personally. Probably. I'm just not a fan of his art beyond yes. the six cents. He's a favorite in the market to be a lovely man. For also. Sure. A guy who definitely goes. He by probably Joe doesn't Burrow. ruin movies for people. Like that's a guy that would like probably ruin well, because his I'll, whole thing. That's his, his whole his thing. thing. He's got a he's, he's got a twist trick. at the end, right? Yeah. That's his whole his whole shtick. Yeah, exactly. All right, Joe Burrow is on the love list. Why? <laughs> well, he'll play in trash bags for one. <laughs> also, just like we talked about this at the top of the show when we were talking about Tua Tonga Bailoa and everything like that, right? Miami Miami now is going to be traveling on a short week. They. Their defense was on the field for 90 plays. It's a lot of plays. In week two. Yeah. On the field for 90 plays, and now they've got to travel on a short week to Cincinnati, where Joe Burrow, by the way, for all the struggles that he's had, he's still averaging over 41 pass attempts per game. Um, he's still throwing a lot. Got off the schneid last week, fantasy-wise. And so this is a good matchup with the Dolphins' defense that has allowed the second most passing yards through three weeks. They're tied for the fourth most deep completions allowed. Um, Xavier Howard is a really good corner, but takes some chances. And, you know, we saw Rashad Bateman, like, beat him bad earlier this season. And so 
Uh, Joe Burrow comes in at QB7 for me this week. He makes the love list here, as you see on your screen, in terms of yards allowed. Nats, they only give up 213 passing yards to the Patriots, but that's the Patriots. 318 in the air to Lamar Jackson, the Ravens, and then 400 to Josh Allen and the Bills in week number three. Five touchdowns allowed passing-wise over the last two weeks for the ball uh, for the Miami Dolphins. I like that. And the whole thing about the Dolphins is they blitz. They're a blitzing defense. Joe yeah. Burrow was the best quarterback in the NFL against the blitz last season. I like that uh, matchup on the short week. All right. Bit more confused by this one. Uh, Russell Wilson, I know you're a big Broncos fan now. Let's big ride. Deal. Yeah, let's ride. The let's belt. ride. My buckle's coming any day now. Let's ride. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. Um, so Russell Wilson, he doesn't run. He hasn't been good so far. He's only got one wide receiver. But he Why doesn't do like spoil movies. It's, He's we a, don't know he that, is also true. a very nice guy. No, everyone he's loves nice Russell guy. Wilson. Yeah, everyone, nice everyone loves Russell Wilson. Yeah. Not everyone loves Jay Croucher, and it's I can, true. I can, he would have I a can, I can say way. that with a with a definitive statement. That's fair. Um, uh, I'm in on Russell Wilson this week, and I get it, right? I mean, like he has been bad. There's no question about it. Fantasy wise, certainly he's been brutal. He is uh, QB 23 on the season, <laughs> um, uh, averaging 12.6 fantasy points per game. But I think the Raiders are. First of all, I think the Raiders will be able to move the ball against Denver, so I think this is a game that uh, should do well. It's an, it's an over-under, like 45-and-a-half, I believe, uh, was the last line I saw on that. Raiders have allowed 260 passing yards every game so far this season, and that includes games against, like, Ryan Tannehill. Right? They, are what, they are what helps a, a, a struggling quarterback. They've given up over eight yards per pass attempt in two of the three games they've played so far this year. Sixth highest completion rate, two quarterbacks through three weeks. You can throw, and you can throw deep on the Las Vegas Raiders. They're actually dead last in sack rate. So Wilson should have a clean pocket here. And I think that you give enough time. Hopefully Jerry Judy is back fully healthy in this one. Give him enough time, he's going to pick apart the Raiders. I have him as a top 12 play this week. Yep. Raiders, inexplicably, a two-and-a-half-point favorite over the Denver Broncos. I don't understand that. I, 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 I did this as a parlay. I'm just going to tell you, right? Yep. Again, Losing teams with winning records, getting points against yep. teams with losing records. I like the the Broncos plus two and a half, the Rams plus two and a half, and uh, and I was able to get the bet in with the uh, the Dolphins getting three and a half. Yep. So um, before I like that, that. I think uh, I think your boy Joe Burrow might be the guy who disrupts that though. Okay, Jared Goff on the love list as the quarterback of the sneakily elite offense in Detroit. Yeah. By the way. Jared Goff is the 11th best quarterback in fantasy so far this year. Like, very, very viable. Seven touchdown passes through three games. He's averaging over 37 pass attempts per game. It is suddenly partially because of the defense and partially because Jared Goff's had a clean pocket and has been fine. But this is a guy that has been a viable fantasy quarterback through three weeks. They're actually, as an offense, the Lions are third in yards per game. Um, and it's a good matchup at home against the Seahawks, right? Seattle's allowing... Uh, the most yards per pass attempt, and the fourth most yards per play. So, again, this game is in Detroit. And, uh, you know, the, the Seahawks are basically a, um, a, 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 you know, almost a barely a top 20 pass defense. So, uh, give me Jared Goff as a streamer this week. He makes the love list. I'm as a top 12 play in week number four. Quickly, run, want to run through a couple of guys on the others receiving votes, and that includes the guy that Jared Goff is facing. Marcus Mariota. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. He's facing Geno Smith. He faced, uh, or he will face Mariota in the future, I think. Um, anyway, Geno Smith, he's had 17 or more fantasy points and multiple touchdowns in two or three games so far this year. Lions have allowed the eighth most passing yard, so I do think Geno Smith is a viable streamer this week. I mentioned Marcus Mariota. He's also a streamer for me as well. Remember, 25 rushing attempts and two rushing touchdowns through three weeks. The, the rushing keeps Mariota's floor high. Falcons, for as, for as much as we want to bag on the Falcons, I mean, I know you love your Falcons, right? I love my right? Falcons. Well, as much my as we want to – Sweet, dirty birds. Sweet, dirty birds. <laughs> like, your Falcons have scored at least 23 points every game this year. I mean, in terms of just as yeah. an NFL. Like, they're putting points on the board. And so, you know, against Cleveland, it's not a great matchup, but they might be without Miles Garrett in this one. Um, it's not a terrible matchup. It's not this Cleveland's defense hasn't been great. They should be. They should be better. But we haven't but seen They've them been so middle far. of the pack here. So, Mariota – and then Zach Wilson. No, no. Right? Right? Quarterback for me, for you, for your mother's <laughs> yeah, fantasy waiting team. For it. Right? Waiting for it. Like the kind of quarterback that you can um, uh, introduce to your mom's fantasy team. Um, Zach Wilson is, is, the, is the fact of the matter is, again, we, we have yet to, 
Here's a, would you, here's a question for you, Mr. Um, you know, you blow every, you know, you, you have no spoiler. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. let's, let me just say, all right. So you're, you're in the kitchen. Yeah. You're, you're in the kitchen with your boy, a mm. buddy, like just like a friend. Yeah. And, um, and then Zach Wilson comes down for, for coffee. Yeah. And he gives you a wink. Yeah. He gives you a wink, a knowing wink, right? And yeah. then he leaves. Are you then turning to your buddy because you love spoiling stuff for people. <laughs> yeah. Are you turning your buddy and says, you know, like, Zach Wilson and your mom. Yeah, absolutely. You are. Absolutely. You're not keeping not that to close. yourself. Absolutely. No, minus 20,000, yes. Absolutely destroying my buddy's day. Um, now, you're destroying Trevor Lawrence's day. All right. Anyway, we're in on Zach Wilson, by the way. I just, real quickly, because they're going to want to cut this for social, and they're not going to want me, they're not going to want a bunch of mom jokes. So <laughs> I'll just say that. The Jets, of all teams, the New York Jets, lead the NFL in pass attempts so far. And since the T.J. Watt injury, Pittsburgh is tied for 24th in terms of quarterback pressures. They've, had, they've really struggled to get to the quarterback. So Wilson should have a clean pocket in a good matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yep. Okay, let's quickly. The two guys on your hate list from the quarterback perspective, Trevor Lawrence and Carson Wentz. Trevor Lawrence, he's going against Philadelphia. It's all matchup-based. I'm a believer in Trevor Lawrence long-term, both this season and, and long-term. He's going to be a viable fantasy quarterback. But the Eagles are top five in the NFL in yards per pass attempt, comp uh, completion rate, passer rating against, yards per play. You see it there on your screen if you're watching on Peacock. They're second in sacks. They're third in QB pressures. This is just too good of a defense. I have uh, Trevor Lawrence outside my top 15 for the week. And then you mentioned Carson Wentz of my beloved Washington Commanders. It's a, it's also a matchup thing. Again, there will be weeks this year where Carson Wentz is very viable for fantasy. It is going to be a pass-heavy offense. He's got nice weapons around him. But he took nine sex, sacks last week. He was pressured 23 times against Philadelphia in week number two. Cowboys lead the NFL in sacks. They're second in quarterback pressures through three weeks. Dallas allowing under 14 fantasy points a game to opposing quarterbacks. And that includes games against Joe Burrow and Tom Brady. They're allowing touchdown passes at second lowest rate in the NFL. Carson Wentz on the hate list this week. You on the hate list always. We're back. <laughs> and by we, I mean me in the next segment. Christian Kirk receiving yards over on a 57 and a half. Give me the over. He's gone over this total each of the last two games. Two and a half receptions for Travis Etienne. We expect the Jags to be down and throwing. Etienne, give me the over on two and a half. James Robinson, Jay, over on the 53 and a half rushing yards. Yeah, no, I don't want to say over again, but I'm saying over again. Matthew Stafford passing over on a 273 and a half. Give me the under against the Cardinals. Over under three and a half receptions for Allen Robinson this week, Matthew. This one I'll actually take the under. Matthew, Cam Makers rushing yards over under 36 and a half. I'm gonna go under on this one. That backfield's low, a mess. Really low. Still it's a mess of a backfield. Oh. I'm in. You know what? <laughs> yeah, over. I'm in on the over. <laughs> Lamar Jackson passing and rushing yards. Over under 274 and a half. Ravens two and a half point favorite. Yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna take the over here. <laughs> Mac Jones passing yards over under 243 and a half. The over on Mac Jones. <laughs> Making people money. When we're not ruining movies, we're making people money. And by we, I really mean Jay Croucher. He's ruining movies. We're both making you money. Here's the most bet props provided by our friends at BetMGM. Tyree Kill to score the first touchdown at plus 750. Anytime touchdown, minus 110. Over 72 and a half receiving yards is minus 115 for Tyree Kill. Anyway, that is for tonight's game, uh, the Thursday night game. You, do you like his odds at the uh, first touchdown or anytime touchdown scoring? Not so much, no. Yeah. Uh, I do think he will devour Eli Apple, uh, yep. which he's going to look forward to, but that's not one of my best bets. My two favorite bets, so firstly, Jamar Chase, under 73 and a half receiving yards. He's gone well under the past two games. I think the league is adjusting to Jamar Chase. 
Probably gets the Xavier and Howard matchup, which is difficult. I think that Joe Burrow will be better in the short game, which is where the Dolphins have really struggled. Devin Singletary did whatever he wanted. Looks like Joe Burrow over 35 and a half pass attempts. What's your best bet? I like Joe Mixon over 21 and a half receiving yards. I'm with you on the short passing game. Remember, this is a guy with a 16% target share. He's gone over this number in two of three games this year. So give me the over on Joe Mixon, 21 and a half receiving yards at BetMGM. Love that. This shirt is for uh, Big Hickory, uh, the Big Hickory restaurant in Bonita Springs, Florida, one of my favorite places. Stay safe and strong. We love all of you guys. Stay dry, Florida. We're praying for you. See you tomorrow. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the, you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.